Hey guys, today I want to cover why money is important. I think this is a super critical thing to understand. I know it took me a really long time to rock the role of money and what money actually is. So I'm hoping that this video will help turn around a lot of people's financial lives because what I want you to walk away from this video understanding is the role of money not only in your own life but in society overall. I think a lot of people understand what money is good for in their own life, but they don't really understand why it's useful to a society as a whole. And I think that leads a lot of people, myself included, to kind of believe that being rich or earning a lot of money is somehow immoral or wrong. And I kind of want to dispel that myth and talk about the history of money and where money comes from and why it's important. So I'm going to go through eight different reasons why money is important both to you and to society. So the first is freedom from the need to work. A lot of us in the Western world who are grown up to get a good college degree and get a good job, this is sort of the path that our parents took that we think we might take as well, work until we're 60 and then retire. And up from now until we're 60 years old, we're gonna be working every day, nine to five, five days a week, and then take you know two, three weeks of vacation per year Life doesn't actually have to be like that. If you are able to save enough money, you can actually have your entire life be weekends. The second one is control over how you spend your time. So if you accumulate enough wealth, this kind of goes hand in hand with freedom from the need to work. You actually get freedom from the need to do things that you don't wanna do. You're no longer having to, to do laundry, to do dishes. You can pay other people to do all of these things and suddenly you have a lot more time to do what you actually want to do. So I want to give you five seconds here to think of five things that you like spending time doing. All right, I'll give you my list just in case you couldn't come up with five things or 10 things. So a couple things that I thought of, one is riding motorcycles, uh, lifting weights, doing Muay Thai, learning languages, having a nice cup of coffee, hanging out with my friends, reading about obscure parts of financial history. I love doing all this stuff. I could have so much more time to do these things if I'm not stuck in the rat race and having to work nine to five every single day. I could free up a lot of time to focus on just doing these fun pursuits. And you'll notice that most of these activities and probably most of yours don't actually require very much money. They aren't expensive activities, they really just take time. I guess my only advice would be motorcycles can get a little expensive. Traveling might be on your list. That can get really expensive, but if you think about it, if you have control over your time, traveling becomes a lot cheaper. You can actually do it way cheaper than you'd ever imagined. If you think about having a week off of vacation, right, you have then nine days from, from first Saturday to last Sunday to go on a vacation, you're probably going to want to maximize that time so you're going to buy the friday night flight to fly out and the sunday night flight back that's going to be really really expensive to buy those because everyone's trying to buy those flights as well and then you want to make sure that during that whole week you're keeping it packed with activities you've got tours lined up you are spending every minute of that time really productively on your vacation and enjoying yourself so you're going to spend a lot of money to enjoy those nine days. If you have control over your time, suddenly you can travel a lot slower. You can leave on a Tuesday afternoon, buy the cheapest possible flight anywhere in the week and come back on another random day when you can find the cheapest possible flight. You have a lot more time to spend. You don't mind taking the slower bus route or the train route that's more scenic that might take you six hours versus a one hour flight and it's a sixth of the cost because you have the time, so why not spend it and save all the money that you would have spent rushing through your vacation? So that's just one way. This can actually make traveling cheaper, so if that is something you enjoy, like that's something I enjoy as well, you can do that a lot cheaper than you think. <clears throat> the third thing on my list is ability to support friends and family. So I think this is a really important one that a lot of us lament not having enough time to spend with our parents, or spend with good friends because we're busy trying to build careers or uh, progress in our, in our traditional jobs and we're spending all this nine to five time just getting through our day and then we're relaxing at the end of the day 
and we're not able to give the emotional energy to our friends and family that they might need in times of need. So if you have enough money to support yourself, now you suddenly have not only possibly money to spend to help people out with things that they may need, but you have a lot more time to spend with them and energy to give to them when they need it. Fourth uh, reason why money is important is reduced financial stress. So stress is actually one of the most pervasive diseases in the world. I don't think we're talking about this pandemic quite enough. I did a little bit of research and uh, I found that stress is obviously linked to poor health, but over 43% of all adults are said to be suffering from adverse health effects from stress. That's a massive, massive disease that we're kind of all carrying around, or most of us are carrying around. Um, another piece of data I found is the Occupational Safety and Health Administration in the U.S. even declares work-related stress affects 83% of employees. That's four out of five employees. That can really drag down all parts of your life and just decrease your overall life satisfaction. If you can reduce that financial stress, save up enough or figure out how to make money in a way that saves you from this stress, that's really, really powerful. And the fifth reason why money is important for you individually is being able to give back to your community. So kind of in the same vein of helping friends and family, you can now dedicate more time to community building, to volunteering, to these activities that maybe you spent uh, you know, a few hours here and there during the month helping at a food bank, but you kind of dipped your toes in it. I know I did this living in New York a few times, but I always felt like, well, I'm so busy with work and I wanna see my friends, and so maybe I can do it once in a blue moon, once in a while. If I didn't have to worry about making money, if I had enough saved up, I could spend way more time. I could have spent a week living at the food bank and really learning about it and helping people and understanding people's struggles. So just allows you more control over your time and you can give that back in, in any way you want. So all these reasons might be all well and good for you. You might have already understood all of this stuff, but it really might be a moral issue with money that you have. This was kind of my issue a few years ago. Especially today, it seems like the rich are poisoning the world for everyone else, destroying the environment, taking advantage of our labor, and then of course getting bailed out by the government when they screw up. And that's all while everyone else is struggling to put food on the table or you know, feeling like they're constantly getting bogged down. And part of that is very true. But what's not true is it's not the concept of money or markets or capitalism that's causing these problems. In truth, we see throughout society that money is actually a huge aid to growing prosperous, healthy, peaceful societies that benefit everyone in that society. Most money gurus won't really tell you much about this, but I think it's key to understand in order to banish these negative misconceptions about money, which many people blame for a lot of societal problems. So I'm gonna give you three reasons why money is really important for society as a whole, rather than just you individually. The first is that money allows for specialization. And specialization is really, really, really important just for the growth of a society. What money is really, is a good that everyone wants. So everything is really just barter. When I go to a store and I buy something, I'm just sort of accepting their price because they won't bargain with me on it. And then I'm trading them my currency for that item. Every barter transaction in an advanced economy uses money because it solves that problem of coincidence of wants. That then allows for specialization because you can trade things for this universally accepted good. Now I can focus on doing one thing and do it really, really well. And then it's much easier for me to trade that thing for money to somebody else and then use my money to trade that for food or something else that I need. So instead of having to grow my own food, build my own shoes, Imagine trying to make your own iPhone. These things come from, from hundreds of countries around the world that all specialize in pulling certain things out of the earth or creating certain components and they're all flown all over the world and then they end up in your pocket. So you wouldn't be able to build that type of technology all on your own. It requires specialization and money makes that so much easier on a societal level. So the second reason that money is important for society 
is that it enables beneficial trade with reduced trust. And trust is a really, really important thing. So you could have trading relationships between two people that operate peacefully and productively without money just by using favors. So you could give me a pair of shoes and I could say, I owe you. Sure, if we're in the same family or we live next door, maybe you'll believe me because you have some sort of recourse to come after me if I don't end up honoring that. However, as societies kind of scale up in size, it becomes impossible for everyone to maintain tight relationships. So if we live in different towns or different cities, we don't have the same degree of trust that you have with your family, with your mother, with your brother. So that system of trading favors kind of breaks down and then you need something that you can trade readily. And then you run into, again, the coincidence of wants problem. So we don't have exactly what the other person wants. We can't finish a trade. So money makes that much smoother and it allows for things like two cities to trade with each other because the inhabitants may not know each other or trust each other, but they can just exchange money that both of them agree is something of value that they can use to exchange. And finally, the most important reason why money is important to society has to do with the use of force. And there's a book called The Sovereign Individual that really encapsulates this well. They talk about the returns to violence. So how much return potentially are you going to get out of a violent act? When the returns to violence are very high, then violence tends to happen. When the returns to violence are very low, violence tends to not happen. So think about two tribes, tribe A and tribe B. It could be two cities, it could be two people. Let's say tribe B has a whole flock of sheep and tribe A really wants to get that flock of sheep. So tribe A, without the presence of money, it's hard to trade with tribe B, right? Let's say tribe B doesn't want anything that tribe A produces. So tribe A really has one option if they really want those sheep. They go over there and try to take them by force and attack tribe B. But that has tons of drawbacks, right? You're putting your own people at risk. You're risking your lives basically to go get those sheep. Now, if trade was easier, which money makes trade much easier, now tribe A has a different option. They, instead of going and taking by force, they can pay for those sheep or try to negotiate a price to buy that, those sheep off of tribe B. So it lowers those returns to violence. Now you're much less likely to put your life at risk to go get what you need because you don't have to take it by force. You can use money to trade and have beneficial, peaceful, mutual trade that works out for everyone. So that's it guys. That's my eight reasons why money is important. Now I hinted at the beginning of the video about why some people villainize money or think that money is the root of all evil. If you wanna understand kind of what's gone wrong with our money today and why people are villainizing it so much, there's very good reasons for it. Check out the link below to my website, whatismoney.info. Go to whatismoney.info slash hate and you'll find a little bit there about financialization and this process that's reoccurred throughout history that we're in the middle of right now and why that's leading people to hate money, to hate capitalism, to hate markets. Thanks guys.